Okay, well, that encompasses a lot of things. What do you picture yourself doing? What well, would you like to do? Just work for a, a business or a firm that could use my education, you know, maybe mm -hmm. building bridges or buildings, dams. Big stuff. Sure. Yeah, I'd like to be out there. Well, good. Nebraska, I, I, I know we've had a lot of engineers uh, here on the football team. Uh, good, good school. Yeah. I think Kevin Seibel's an engineer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's one thing about uh, the program, uh, John, is that I know Ursula Walsh, who does such an excellent job, they work with these kids, uh, to these young men, to tailor programs you know, in specific areas. Uh, if a guy's interested in, in one particular phase, I, uh, I know she works hard to, to, you know, to kind of help him out, and uh, they, they take an awful lot of pride in the academic end of it. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, we probably graduate a higher percentage of student athletes than, than just the regular students do. Because, and a lot of that is, is the type of athletes we recruit, and I think Ursula Walsh, and of course, uh, she does a great job for us, but you know it has to come from the top. Bob Devaney always believed in a great education. Tom Osborne always believed in a great education. And if it doesn't come from the top, then then what do you have? You know. Mm -hmm. And really, if you play football four or five years and you don't have education, you wasted four or five years of your life. That's right. That's right. The percentage of the old story about well, the pros yeah, is very look, small. Look, uh, you know, pro the guys playing pro football. Uh, the rookies that make it are very, very uh, small, and but uh, you know, even if you make it, you're an old man of 33, and you're still going to live a long time. So you better get that degree, and we just pound that on degree. And they have study table tonight, and Sammy's been on it, and I'm sure, and Dave's been mm -hmm. on it, and things like that. And they don't care whether you're seniors or freshmen. Your grades go down, you go on a study table. Mm -hmm. That's right. One thing I noticed in the in the resume on you, Dave, I have to ask you: you still play the harmonica? Oh yes. Do you? Just a little pastime, you know. Is that right? This guy when I'm not playing football it, or studying. <laughs> keep anybody up there? I never knew he had yeah. great uh, talent like oh, that. Well, yeah. it's not great musical talent, but... Maybe at the rookie <laughs> show next year, we could bring you back yeah. and uh, have you play a little song. I forgot to mention, last week we had Rick Lindquist. I think he plays the trumpet. I oh, does he? Think. Yeah, and uh, of course... Uh, Slick Steels, of course, is the piano player and the singer. We could have quite a... You know, we might get group. quite an orchestra right. going there, but... Uh, We'll wait till the season's over. <laughs> you orchestrate a win over Kansas yeah. State this week is what you want to do. Well, Dave, the, you know, that's one thing, too, that shows the compatibility is that the, the walk-ons and the scholarship players, I've never noticed any particular enmity between them. Uh, you know, everybody contributes. We're all on one team, and I don't think it matters to anybody. We pull together pretty good. Everybody's good friends. That's right. Well, then, you know, in fact, I didn't even know uh, Dave was a walk-on till till you brought. I thought he was a scholarship guy. Well, John, this program is very well, educational. It's a very educational, educational program. He's a walk-on. He plays a harmonica. I can see that. You've got to, you've got to meet some people outside the linebackers. Well, John. <laughs> Sometimes I, I agree with you. I've got to meet other guys. Live in right. two smaller cells. Yeah, you're right. right. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the schedule now coming up uh, this week in the Big Eight. This is uh, kind of an important week for a lot of schools. Now, Kansas is a team that at times has given Oklahoma trouble. You think they can do it this week, John? Well, Kansas last week, they, they lost all four of their offensive guards, you know, before the ball game. Mm -hmm. And and they uh, lost a couple offensive tackles, so they couldn't do much. Yeah, true and I, too. I don't know. I think Oklahoma will probably beat them. <laughs> I would think that Barry Switzer had better win this or he may get ambushed. Well, I'll tell you, they're... they're they're just like anybody else. You know. That's, right. Yeah. That's right. Kevin Missouri and Iowa Saturday. State. Now, here's one of the first big crucial games of the conference season. This is a game that is played at Ames, if that might be a little help. Missouri's got a lot of confidence now. They're number eight in the nation. Iowa State got pummeled out there at San Diego. So that's really going to be a big game for both teams, Missouri to keep it going or Iowa State to salvage a good season. And here's a game now. Can Colorado come back? Uh, can Oklahoma State keep going? They've been playing awfully well. And uh, as John, as we look at these teams who are playing well, it seems like uh, Missouri and Oklahoma State, they're still to come. So the, the Yeah, we have them all tough. yet. That's right. That's right. Let's like, uh, take a look here at uh, Jim Dickey, fine family of coaches and athletes. Jim, uh, Jim hasn't been able to smile very much. It's probably one of his rare smiles at Kansas State. He's had to take his whippings down there. Yeah, well, you know, his decision to redshirt eight guys is, is a good decision. I mean, but... If my son was playing quarterback, <laughs> you'd want some of those things, yeah, wouldn't you? I'll tell you, uh, <laughs> I know Beverly would make life awful miserable for me if I, if I did that. But 
he's doing it to build up uh, his program and uh, it you know it could work out because anybody can beat anybody anymore it's I don't know whether there aren't any great teams in the country or what like Arizona beating Southern Cal mm -hmm. in Los Angeles see? Yeah. and Las Vegas beating uh, BYU. BYU in Provo mm -hmm. I, I tell you you better be ready every week and uh, we try to uh, you know impress this point upon our kids it's a week by week affair other players that we can look for in the ball game Mark Hundley one of the running backs here uh, they have a kicker Steve Willis who uh, uh, hasn't had a lot of action so far this this year they haven't scored that many touchdowns and uh, Will Coakley a linebacker these are some of the uh, Kansas State Wildcats that you'll be seeing in action as the Huskers take them on down there as you mentioned, uh, John, they redshirt a very unusual thing, redshirting seven or eight uh, seniors. Regulars. Yeah, yeah right. seniors, starters. They redshirted them to, to kind of build up, to stockpile a little bit for next year. And uh, when you're losing, I guess it becomes not too great an idea. If, if you were winning a little bit, it might be a smart idea, but it is an investment, and uh, we'll see what happens. But anyway, as uh, Coach Osborne mentioned this week, and as you have earlier here too, John, Kansas State in Manhattan is a different situation. So right. we'll wish you good luck down there. Thank you. And fellas, Dave Stromath, Sammy Sims, we appreciate your coming out. Nice to Always on enjoy the show. meeting the players. In fact, John and I for inviting us out. have to uh, take our lumps because they tell us we love your show, we love to see the players. Yeah. And that's <laughs> the main reason they're here. Let's hope we can come back next week now and watch another victory as the Huskers take on Kansas.